Hey, what's going on guys? Clickwood here back again bringing you guys another Madden 16 Ultimate Team Budget Series episode. Guys, the positions that we're going to be talking about today are offensive line. I've got a lot of players that I want to go through today, so it is going to take us a little bit of a, a while to go, get through everything, so stick with me. If you want to skip through some stuff, I totally understand, but we're going to go over all five offensive linemen positions in this video. We're going to break down guys who are balanced at both pass blocking and run blocking, and then we're also going to get into specialists at both pass blocking and run blocking. So it's going to be a long video. I think you guys are going to enjoy it, though. So uh, with that being said, let's hop right into it. The first position that we're going to be taking a look at is left tackle. Now, obviously, guys, uh, there's a lot that goes into offensive linemen, but I've broken it down to the most important attributes, in my personal opinion. We've got strength, run blocking, pass blocking, impact block, acceleration, speed, and awareness. Now, there are also things like agility that some people like to give a crap about. I personally don't think that those things are particularly important, but uh, you know these are these are the ones like I said that I think are the most important. On the left side of your screen, we're going to have the the budget card. On the right side of your screen, we're going to have a more expensive card that is in comparison to it, so you can get kind of an idea of you know what you're getting for your money. Now, my personal opinion, obviously, is that you know you've got to have all these things kind of be important to you. You can't necessarily focus on one specific attribute. You kind of have to look at all of them, but. But uh, the most important ones, in my personal opinion, depending on the position, of course, obviously strength is going to be very, very important. I put that one first. Run block and pass block, obviously, are the second most important, in my personal opinion. Uh, and then, obviously, it depends on what you're doing with your offensive lineman. Impact block is the attribute. As far as I understand it, impact block basically means that your offensive lineman is going to knock down the opposing player. So this is particularly important, for example, if they're uh, going out on a run and they're, they're pulling, for example, they're going down the field, they hit a cornerback, they knock them down. That would be an impact block, okay? Uh, and obviously, acceleration and speed have a little bit to do with that as well, with the pulling. So that second row of attributes pretty much has to do with pulling. And then obviously, your last row is just awareness. I don't necessarily think awareness is super important, although I know that uh, I did do an, a Madden Mythbusters last year on, um, on specifically awareness, and it did kind of show us that it mattered a little bit, at least for run blocking. Pass blocking, it actually wasn't that important, though, so uh, kind of an interesting thing. I did include it on here because I know a lot of people have questions about awareness and uh, you know what the players have in awareness, especially for offensive line, so uh, there it is, guys, but... Obviously, the left side of your screen's got a lot of red attributes, and basically what that means is that they're going to be lower overall in that attribute. So, for example, here we've got Joe Staley on the left. He's got 86 strength. We're comparing him to Tyron Smith, who has 88 strength. The green attribute means it's higher. Yellow means they're exactly the same in that attribute. So it gives you guys kind of an idea of uh, where these guys stack up. Now... Because we're talking about balanced offensive linemen here, uh, what we're kind of focusing in on is is not specifically uh, run blocking or pass blocking, but we want a combination of both of those. So in this case, we've got Joe Staley having a 92 run block and an 88 pass block. That is very, very good for a gold card, especially. Uh, he's only going for 3,000 coins as well. He's 84 overall. 3,000 coins, extremely, extremely cheap. I mean, you can do one solo challenge and get this Joe Staley card. And, uh, you know, it, personally, I, I actually really think that this is a great offensive lineman. Uh, he's, like I said, he's very, very cheap, but he's really quite good at just about everything. He's only a couple attributes lower than Tyron Smith at just about everything. He is a little bit low, unfortunately, in the pass blocking attribute. Typically, I like to see a little bit higher out of my pass blocking out of a left tackle because, you know, obviously you're facing, you know, either the, off, the defense's best pass rusher or their second best pass rusher at worst. So it is important to have good pass blocking. But he does have good attributes kind of across the board. He's not super low in anything. He's very, very good, especially for the price. Now, obviously, Tyron Smith does kind of blow him out of the water as far as an overall attributes. I mean, he's better than him in just about everything other than awareness, and they're the same in, in acceleration. But the, the reality is, is that, like I said, he's not much higher in anything other than pass block. He's five higher there. Uh, and then he's only two higher in strength, run blocking, and impact block. So these cards are actually very, very comparable. Tyron Smith, though, going for 50,000 coins. Uh, he is the upgraded card, obviously. You know, if you if you do have 50,000 coins, I'm not going to tell you Joe Staley is going to be better for you or anything like that. But if you don't have the amount of coins to spend on a Tyron Smith, 
Joe Staley's definitely going to do a good job for you. And he's somebody you can really build your team around and uh, kind of grow with. You can get him for super cheap. And as you upgrade your positions in other areas, you can go ahead and keep him in your lineup uh, up until maybe you get to the point where left tackle is your lowest overall position. Then you go ahead and maybe make an upgrade to a, a Tyron Smith or something like that. But until you get to that point, this card is going to do you very, very well. So I like him a lot as a balanced left tackle. Uh, now, with that being said, though, I do want to move on here, and I want to talk about some players that are, like I said, kind of more specifically built for an individual thing. And uh, what we're going to talk about next is pass blocking specialists. So these are guys who are specifically built to pass block, okay? So the most important attributes for these guys, strength, pass block, and then, you know, it kind of depends on what your your thoughts are on, on various different things. I don't really think that much of the other attributes are super important for pass blocking, personally. Uh, as far as my testing is done, the obviously run blocking doesn't matter when you're pass blocking. Impact block doesn't really happen a whole lot when you're pass blocking. Acceleration obviously isn't important at all because you're not you know, kicking out and actually getting down the field. Speed, same thing, doesn't really matter. And awareness, it could matter. We did see when I did testing in Madden 15, at least, that it, it did give you a little bit more time if you had higher awareness with your players on the offensive line in the pocket. It gave you a little bit more time as your quarterback goes. But, uh, you know, it wasn't substantial. It really wasn't. So the most important two attributes, in my opinion here, are pass block and strength. So in this case, we've got Jared Veldier on the left side of your screen going for 3,000 coins, and we're going to be comparing him to, on the right side of your screen, Joe Thomas, 130,000 coins. He's a 90 overall elite, definitely one of the best left tackles in this game. I'm, again, I'm not going to say Joe Thomas is not a better player than Jared Veldier, but the reality is I don't think he's a substantially better pass blocker. He does have three higher in pass block, but he is also one lower on strength. So these cards are very, very comparable as far as pure pass blocking goes. Run blocking, it's actually not that far off either. To be honest with you, the run blocking is, is still decent out of Jared Valdir. He has an 85. It's average, slightly above average among gold cards, but Jer Joe Thomas is still only has an 89. That is not super spectacular as we saw in the last attribute um, or on the last comparison. You know, an 89 isn't super high anyway. So, uh, again, out of a pass blocker, if you're looking for somebody that can do a good job pass blocking and you're somebody that passes most of the time, I think Jared Veldier is actually going to be a very, very good card for you. And I would definitely go ahead and recommend him to you if you're a pass, uh, a person that passes a lot in your offense. So, uh, let's move on now and talk about run blocking because, again, we want to make sure that we talk about players that are good at each individual thing, run blocking, pass blocking, and then balance. So uh, this is your left tackle run blocking position. And in this comparison here, I, I really, really like this, this uh, Taron Armstead card. He's actually 83 overall, which isn't super high. This is the Road to the Playoffs card. And we're going to compare him to Nate Soldier on the right side of your screen. He's 88 overall. This is the BCA Nate Soldier. So he does have a little bit of an inflated price because he's a BCA card. But honestly, his attributes aren't that much better than uh, Taron Armstead. One thing that I am I really, really feel strongly about is that Taron Armstead is probably the best pulling left tackle in the game. So if you have a play where your offensive linemen are moving... And and, uh, you know, they're going, if you're going off tackle particularly, uh, and he's going to be going out there and trying to pick up blocks down the field, there might not be a better player in this game right now than Taron Armstead to do that. He's the fastest offensive lineman in Madden 16 currently. 83 speed. That's faster than some cornerbacks. Yes, you heard me right. An offensive lineman is faster than some of the defensive backs in this game. That is absolutely ridiculous. 83 speed, 88 acceleration as well. He's going to get up to that top end speed very, very quickly for an offensive lineman. So that's always great to see. Uh, his pass blocking is actually pretty decent here as well at an 88. And again, his run blocking is really solid at a 91. He is lower in both strength and run blocking than Nate Soldier is. But at the same time, though, he is still really, really good in almost all of these attributes here. His his awareness is quite low though at an 80 or a 76 excuse me that is quite low for a player that uh we definitely want higher awareness out of hopefully Taron Armstead will get an upgraded card at some point because if he does we might see probably the best run blocker in this game uh so that's something to definitely look at I again I'm a big fan of this Taron Armstead card especially if you are going out there and uh run blocking with him down the field so with that said guys that is left tackle let's move on to left guard 
So at left guard, guys, again, we're going to start off with our balanced players. These are guys who are good at both run blocking as well as pass blocking. And on the left side of your screen, we have Andrew Norwell of the Carolina Panthers going for about 4,500 coins. This is his road to the playoffs item. And we're going to be comparing him to Josh Klein, team MVP for the New England Patriots, 93 overall, 175,000 coins for Klein. And we're comparing him to Norwell, who's only going again for 4,500 coins. Uh, so again... We're not going to try and say that the card on the left is necessarily better than the card on the right, but it is important that we kind of compare these cards to something that is really, really good. And I, I think the value that you're getting out of an Andrew Norwell is very, very good. He's solid at just about every single one of these attributes that we care about. His strength is a little bit low, so that's something I'm a little worried about. It's only an 87. It's not horrible by any means. But it is something that we would like to see get a little bit bumped up. Maybe if he gets an upgraded card at some point, we'll see. Uh, and then his run blocking is a 93. That is very, very good. I prefer run blocking out of my guards versus pass blocking. I think that typically you're going to face more better pass rushers at tackle. And so your guards really are more focused on kind of, especially if you're running like an inside zone type of offense where you, you implement a lot of that or draw plays and things like that. Your guards do have to play against the run a lot more or for the run, I should say. Uh, so we do want a high run blocking. Strength is very important. And then obviously pass blocking. He's actually better than Josh Klein in pass blocking. He's an 89 versus an 88. Now where he does lag a little bit behind, he's not nearly as fast. His acceleration is quite a bit lower, nine attributes lower. His speed is eight attributes lower. Lower. And then his impact block is also nine attributes lower. So that is a little bit discouraging. But again, we're only talking about a 4,500 coin card and we're comparing him to the most expensive right or uh, left guard in the game, Josh Klein. So it makes sense that he's going to be lower in most of these attributes. His awareness is also a little bit lower as well. But overall, though, this Andrew Norwell item, although he does have a lot of red on his screen, he is quite good at the, the things that are most important. Strength, run block, pass block. Again, that's going to be kind of across the board at pretty much any any one of these positions that we look at, regardless of really what we're spe specifically looking at, whether it's pass blocking or run blocking, it doesn't really matter that much. Those are really the most important things, strength, run block, pass block, and he's good at all three of them. So I definitely think he's worth 4,500 coins, and he's somebody that you can really kind of build a base offensive line around. So now let's move on, guys, and let's talk about specifically pass blocking left guards. Again, I tend to look at guys that are more run blockers for guards, but still, I know a lot of people do run more of a run first offense. So in this case, we're going to be comparing Gabe Jackson to Josh Sitton. Gabe Jackson, 6,500 coins, very, very cheap. And he's a really, really good player as well. 93 strength is actually higher than Josh Sitton. And then he still has a 93 pass block, which is two attributes lower than Josh Sitton. But when you really look at these things, he's not that much further off. I mean, it's, it's really, really close. He's two higher in strength, two lower in pass block. He does have one higher in run block as well. So of the three most important attributes, he's actually higher than Josh Sitton in two of them. That is kind of interesting in my opinion. He also has decent acceleration. So if you do pull with him as a run blocker, he is going to do a decent job there for you as well. So I, I think uh, Gabe Jackson, again, is 6,500 coins versus 30,000 coins. Josh Sitton really isn't that expensive. So this isn't a, a huge difference in, in as far as like the attributes go. But if you're somebody that doesn't have 30,000 coins to spend and you need a decent pass blocking left guard, Gabe Jackson's a good one. Football Outsiders, Gabe Jackson, take a look at him. See if you can find him even a little bit cheaper than this. I've seen him go as low as like 4,000 coins on PlayStation 4. So definitely go in there. See if you can find him for cheap. And he's going to do a really nice job for you as a pass protector. And he's actually a decent run blocker as well. So we don't have to worry about that too much. He's not a liability in that area. So now, guys, let's move on and let's talk about the uh, run blockers here, guys. On the right side of your screen, we have Evan Mathis, 65,000 coins. He is 89 overall, obviously known as one of the better run-blocking guards in this game. And then we're going to be comparing him to Ron O'Leary of the Dallas Cowboys, a standard gold card, 82 overall, but he is really, really good at specifically run-blocking. He is a liability in pass protection. I'm not going to say that he's not. 75 at a pass block, that is really, really low, but he does have amazing run-blocking attributes. He is a 95 for run-blocking and with 88 strength as well. So he is arguably one of the best overall run blockers in this game. If you're looking for just somebody that can go out there and, and just run straight forward with, if you can get behind him and, uh, you know, get down the field, he is going to do a great job for you blocking at the line of scrimmage. Again, quite low overall in the pass blocking department. He doesn't have great speed or acceleration or awareness, but as far as a pure run blocker goes, it doesn't get a whole lot better than this. So if you're somebody that runs the ball almost exclusively in your offense, 
definitely take a look at Ronald Leary because he is going to do a great job for you. Moving on now to center, and we have our balanced centers here. On the left side of your screen, we've got Khalid Holmes, and we're going to be comparing him to Corey Lindsley on the right side of your screen. Lindsley, the Thanksgiving card, going for about 80,000 coins. Again, because he was part of a promo, his price is a little bit inflated. He'd probably be more like a, an, a maybe a 50,000 coin card or so if he was just a standard elite, but still, very, very expensive. When we're comparing him to a card that's only going for 3,000 coins, this is a Football Outsiders Khalid Holmes. And just like I've said with quite a few of these ones, I, I'm not trying to tell you that the Khalid Holmes is better by any means, but for the price, he's pretty solid. He, he's a pretty good card at just about everything. 91 strength, 86 run block, 92 pass block is, is a really nice attribute for a center. Uh, if you're somebody that's getting hit with a lot of blitzes up the middle, he can definitely pick that up and do a great job. Uh, his impact block is solid at an 88 as well. He does also move down the field at a decent pace. 82 acceleration, only 66 speed, but that's okay. Uh, and then his awareness is almost the same as Corey Lindsley's actually at a 76 versus a 77, uh, where he does obviously lag behind in some of the more important areas, the strength. He is four lower than Lindsley, and he is also six lower as a run blocker. I understand typically your centers are going to be more kind of run block based, but at the same time though, uh, Khalid Holmes is, he's still decent in both of those attributes. 91 is not really something to be worried about. 86 run block is a little bit low, unfortunately, but he does make up for it, I think, with the high strength and the, also the pass blocking being so good. So that's why I really like Holmes. I think for 3,000 coins, it's going to be hard for you to find a better overall center than this in the game. Maybe months from now, the, the prices will change and some of these better centers will drop a little bit in price. But for right now, Khalid Holmes is definitely one of the better budget centers that you're going to find in this game. Moving on now to pass blocking centers. And yes, Khalid Holmes is the card that we're going to be looking at again. I think specifically for pass blocking, he is really, really good. Obviously, we just talked about the fact that he has 92 pass block, 91 strength. So if again, if you're somebody that goes out and passes a lot in your offense, if you're more of like a 70 to 80 percent or more uh, passing offense, I would say that this is the card that you probably want to target for a budget center. He's very, very good again in just about every one of those attributes. His run blocking isn't particularly terrible again either. And we're going to be comparing him to Will Montgomery on the right side of your screen. 88 overall. He's going for about 50,000 coins. And uh, again, Will Montgomery is better. I'm not going to say that he's not. But he's not substantially better in just about anything. He's only a couple attributes higher in most of these things. Uh, his biggest real difference is that he has a much higher awareness at an 88 versus a 76. But uh, and, and then also his strength is four higher. But when you compare the prices, I mean, it's it's just not worth it, in my opinion, to spend that many more coins on a card that's only a couple attributes higher in most of these things. So again, I, I think Khalid Holmes is definitely somebody that you could look at as either a balanced center or a specifically pass block blocking center. So uh, he's definitely a good one. And then the last comparison that we're going to have here for centers is our run blocking centers. Left side of your screen, Ryan Khalil going for 3,000 coins. And we're going to be comparing him to a 100,000 coin card, Rodney Hudson on the right side of your screen. And I'm going to tell you guys straight up, my opinion is that if you're looking for a run blocking center, Ryan Khalil is actually better than Rodney Hudson. And the reason for it, he's got one higher strength, one higher run blocking as well. He's better in speed, and he still has decent acceleration as well. He actually also has higher awareness. So if you're looking for a, a pure run blocking center, I would actually recommend Ryan Khalil over Rodney Hudson. It's not often that I'm going to say that in these comparisons, guys. So again, if you're somebody that runs the ball 80, 90% of the time, which I know not a lot of people do, but I have seen people online that have a very, very run first offense. You run a lot of inside zones and things like that to establish the run and take up the clock and things like that. Ryan Khalil is an excellent card. He is a complete liability as a pass protector. I'm not going to say that he's not. 75 pass block is not good at all. It's it's really, really a bad attribute, to be honest with you, for a center. But at the same time, though, guys, he's such a good run blocker that I could see people using him in their offenses, even if you're only going to run the ball 60% of the time, let's say. So uh, definitely look at this one, though. I, I like to include these cards that are you know specifically run blocking and pass blocking, just in case there are people out there who, you know, really have an offense built around either running or passing the ball. 
Okay, moving on now to right guard. And guys, we're talking again about, about balance blockers. So these are guys that are both good at run blocking and pass blocking. Right side of your screen, TJ Lang. Sounds like almost like I'm picking on the Green Bay Packers with how many of them I've had included in this. But it just so happens that their elite overall offensive linemen are, are really not that great. And they're kind of expensive. He's going for 40,000 coins. We're going to be comparing him to David DeCastro. Again, another football outsiders. If you haven't noticed, a lot of these cards are football outsiders because we're seeing upgrades within these cards and uh, it makes sense because they're not the base gold cards they're basically an upgraded version of their original card so it does make sense that they would you know get some boosts in some of the things that we really care about strength run block pass block things like that so in this case guys we're again we're talking about balance blocking I tend to lean toward bl run blockers for guards so we've got kind of a, a player that kind of fits that mold a little bit here 96 strength 91 run block with David DeCastro he does have an 85 pass block so that's a little bit low at guard it's not horrible though it's really not and then uh we're comparing him to a, the tj lang on the right side of your screen that only has an 88 strength i think that's very very important 88 strength is not that high for a guard he does have great run blocking and pass blocking attributes obviously we're not going to say that he doesn't 93 and 90 so he is quite a bit higher two higher in run block five higher in pass block but that liability in the strength department is extremely important if he goes up against some of these legend defensive tackles the guys that have you know the the 98 strength and things like that even though he has a really high run block and pass block attribute he is sometimes just going to get straight mowed over especially when they use their power move so it's something to consider I would definitely look at this D David DeCastro card as a really good balanced offensive guard he does a great job at just about everything again like most of these cards lower in awareness and not so high in impact block but he does also have a decent acceleration here at an 80 his speed isn't spectacular but that's okay um Again, I really like this Dave DeCastro card for 5,000 coins. It's hard to find something that is going to do better as far as just like an overall offensive guard than this. I think he's a really, really nice card, and I would definitely recommend you guys take a look at him. Now let's talk about pass blocking specialists at right guard. This is the same exact player that I used last year for this, uh, Larry Warford. Now, I, I'm going to point this out here. He doesn't have a single attribute that he's actually higher than Kyle Long in. Obviously, Kyle Long, team captain, 90 overall, 90,000 coins. You're not expecting that Larry Warford's going to be better at many things, if anything. But I want to say how many things he's the same as or only slightly lower than Kyle Long at. It's kind of interesting. His strength is the same. He's a 90 strength. He has unbelievable pass block, 95 pass block. That is extraordinary for a right guard. Extremely, extremely high. So if you're somebody that passes the ball a lot, Larry Warford is going to be money for you. He's going for like between four to 5,000 coins. Very, very well worth it. He is slow though. 53 speed with only a 73 acceleration. That is really, really slow. So he's not somebody that's going to be able to kick out and run block down the field for you very well. Uh, but he is okay at run blocking because he has decent strength. So it's not like he's a complete liability as a run blocker. But his run blocking attribute being an 83 is quite low. So it is a little bit disappointing. But again, we're talking specifically about an offensive lineman for passing first offenses. If you go out there and you pass 80% of the time, Larry Warford is a great, great card for you. Definitely well worth the 5,000 coins. And then once you get, you know, a better overall team, you can upgrade from there. But uh, again, very, very solid card here for Larry Warford. And then the last thing, run blocking specialists. We've got Jeff Schwartz on the left side of the screen, comparing him to Marshall Yonda on the right side of your screen. Yonda going for 120,000 coins. He's 90 overall. Uh, and then Jeff Schwartz, the uh, the road to the playoffs card, only going for 3,000 coins. Very, very low priced. Again, guys, we're, we're really talking about the cheap of the cheap at these cards. It's it, I mean, it's super cheap to put together this offensive line if you wanted to. 94 strength. He has an awesome run blocking attribute of a 93 as well. His pass blocking is not good in 81. Again, Another liability in that area, but if you're somebody that runs the ball a lot, this is kind of a, a really good card for you. He does have solid acceleration as well at in 78, only a 58 speed, but you know, right guards aren't going to be typically moving down the field that often anyway. Um, obviously, his awareness is going to be lower than Yanda's as well. Again, not saying that he's better than Yanda, but he does have great strength. 
94 strength is, is very, very high. And uh, his pass blocking, again, is kind of a liability. But his pure run blocking is solid. Run block, strength, those things, if you're literally looking for a run blocking offensive lineman, those are the two most important attributes. And Jeff Schwartz does a great job in both of those areas. He also has an 88 impact block, which is actually higher than Marshall Yonda's as well. So if you do kick him out and he's going down there and blocking those those safety, those, those cornerbacks, or even the linebackers, he can definitely put them on their asses. All right, we're on to the last position, guys. Thanks for sticking with me. We're on to right tackles, and we're going to, again, start off with our balanced right tackles. On the right side of your screen, we have Jonathan Ogden, one of the most expensive offensive linemen in this game. He is 93 overall as a right tackle. We're going to be comparing him to Morgan Moses, Football Outsiders. Once again, Football Outsiders, pay attention to that, guys. These Football Outsiders offensive linemen typically are pretty darn good, and they're typically pretty cheap as well. Uh, but again... Only 4,000 coins here for Morgan Moses. Again, not going to say he's better than Jonathan Ogden, but in terms of, you know, most of these attributes, he's actually fairly close. He does have a really solid pass blocking attribute, and he is also really good in strength as well. 94 for strength. He does only have an 85 for a run block, so that's quite a bit lower than what we'd like to see. But as far as like the, the value that you get here for 4,000 coins, it's hard to find anything better at right tackle. Right tackle just isn't a position where they've put out a lot of great cards this year. So Morgan Moses is kind of one of the ones that kind of stands out. He's uh, a quite good pass blocker, and we'll talk about that in, few, in a few moments here. Uh, his run blocking attributes actually are still pretty decent, though, because he does have a decent acceleration and speed. So if he does go down the field and, and block down the field, he's going to do a decent job there. 86 impact block is decent as well. The strength is really the where we're, we're uh, most impressed with Morgan Moses. He's actually the same as Jonathan Ogden in that area. So uh, that's really, really good. That goes to show you just how strong he is. And if he does ever get another upgraded card beyond this, we're going to be talking about one of the better pure pass blockers in this game. So uh, yeah, that kind of makes sense. He is a good balanced blocker. Like I said, the 85 run block, we wish that was a little bit higher, but it's hard to find somebody actually for a decent price in this game that plays right tackle that's both you know, a decent run blocker and a decent pass blocker. So this is pretty much where you're looking at at this point in the game anyway, uh, as far as balanced offensive lineman goes. Uh, and then obviously, guys, as we kind of alluded to in just a, a, a few moments ago, Obviously, Morgan Moses is built to be a pure pass blocker, or not a pure pass blocker, but leaning toward a pass blocking uh, specialist, and that's why he is our pass blocking right tackle as well. Again, 4,000 coins on the left side of your screen with Morgan Moses, comparing him to Sebastian Bulmer, who's going for 80,000 coins, and again... Just like we talked about before, you could make the case that in, as far as like the main three attributes that we care about, strength, run block, pass block, he's actually better than Sebastian Vollmer because he is two higher in strength. He's only one lower in pass block, which is kind of interesting. So like those things are pretty much going to cancel out. He's going to be a, a really solid pass protector. And then he's still a little bit higher also in run blocking, which is really, really interesting. You compare him as far as impact block goes, he's only one lower, two lower in acceleration, one higher in speed. I mean, we're talking like one or two attributes for all of these things until you get to awareness and then yeah obviously there's a huge difference 70 awareness versus 88 awareness for Sebastian Vollmer uh, so again Morgan Moses kind of a liability in awareness but as far as like pass protection goes like I said in Madden 15 I did an, a, a Mythbusters video about offensive lineman awareness and I kind of showed that it's really not all that important at least from the testing that I did and, and pretty much everybody has come to that conclusion as well uh, it's actually oddly enough more important for run blocking the awareness attribute is so uh, kind of interesting there but anyway uh, that is your pass blocking right tackle and again 20, 20 times as expensive for Sebastian Vollmer, and I just don't think he's worth it, to be completely honest with you. Just for awareness, I just don't think it's really worth it. So so let's move on to our final comparison of the video. And again, guys, thank you for sticking with me through all of this. I know it's a long video, but I really do appreciate it. If you are enjoying it, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe as well. Uh, right tackles, run blocking specifically. Phil Lodeholt on the left side of your screen, we obviously know him as being one of the best run blockers in the game. He has been for quite a few years now. 2,000 coins, and we're comparing him to Tyson Claybo on the right side of your screen, 89 overall, 90,000 coins for that card. And honestly, 
Phil Lodeholt might be a better overall run blocker. I mean, if you look at the strength, he's four higher. He's only two lower as a run blocker in, in that pure run blocking attribute. And, uh, and he's actually higher in both acceleration and speed. So if he does go down the field, he's going to be better than Tyson Claybo getting to the players quicker. So it's kind of interesting. And actually, his awareness is actually pretty solid as well, 85. Now, where he is a little bit of a problem is that he does only have an 80 pass block. So that's a little bit of an issue. But again, he's going to make up for it in, in some ways with the fact that he does have decent strength or he does have super high strength actually for a right tackle uh, and decent acceleration and speed so he can get out there if he needs to and make blocks on guys that are a little bit more quick. So again, that is your run blocking specialist. Phil Lodeholt, only 2,000 coins, super, super cheap. Uh, and that is going to wrap up the video, guys. I hope that you enjoyed this. I know it was really, really long. And I promise you we won't have another one that is this long, but I, I know offensive lineman is kind of one of those things where you kind of have to specify what you're looking for, and so it can get to be pretty long, and plus I'm fairly long-winded as it is. So thank you guys again. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, do me a favor. Click that like button. We put a lot of work into these videos, so if you do enjoy them, please help me out. Hit that like button. And of course, if you're new to the channel, make sure you press that subscribe button as well. Thank you guys so much. Good luck building your offensive line, and uh, let me know in the comment section below as well. Do you guys want to see defensive line next? Cornerbacks? I know cornerbacks is a pretty common one. Tight ends. What do you guys want to see as far as the budget players go next? Let me know in the comments section below and I'll try and make it happen. Thank you guys so much and I'll talk to you again soon. Hey guys, if you're enjoying my videos, do me a favor, click that subscribe button on the right side of your screen right now. Otherwise, you can always check out my previous video by clicking on the left side of the screen. Thank you guys again.